All right, let's look at an example here from our test on partial fraction decomposition. This would be number five. So we have negative six x squared plus 13 over, you have this quantity x squared minus two being squared. So when you set up a problem like this, the first thing you're gonna check is to make sure you have a proper fraction. The degree in the numerator is two. The degree in the denominator, if you were to expand this, this x squared minus two, and then you'd have x squared minus two again, you can see that you would have a fourth degree polynomial right? So the degree in the numerator is two, the degree in the denominator is four, so you would have a proper fraction, okay? We don't need to do this because it's actually more convenient for this to be factored. That would be your next step if it's not factored, okay? So all we need to do now is just check to make sure that this part right here is irreducible, or we say a prime polynomial, right? So it can be factored using rational numbers, and it can't. So we have this x squared minus two. Now, when you have a repeated quadratic factor, in other words, this is raised to the second power, what you have to do is build up the power, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first go x squared minus 2, and this is basically raised to the first power, okay? You don't need that. I'm just putting it there for emphasis. Then plus over here, you're going to go x squared minus 2 quantity squared, okay? So the big mistake is people just put this one and they leave this one off. So you got to build up the power. You don't need this to the first power. I'm just, again, doing that for emphasis. Now, what's going to go up here in the numerator? Remember, if you have this quadratic down here or something to the second power, then you want something to the first power in your numerator. So I'm going to put ax plus b. Okay, this is to the first power. This is to the second power. So you want one degree less in the numerator. Then down here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to use some different letters. I'm going to say I have cx plus d. Okay, so this is the basic setup for this guy. And once you have this, you're just doing some algebra, okay? So I'm going to multiply both sides by the LCD. So you can think about the LCD as being what? It's going to be this guy right here, okay? So this denominator and this denominator, those would be the LCD. This one is not quite there, okay? So if I multiply both sides by the LCD, what's going to happen is it's going to cancel here and it's going to cancel here, okay? So I would have negative 6x squared plus 13, okay? Let me put equals over here. I would have CX plus D. So those would be set up. Over here, what you would have is your AX plus B, okay, over your X squared minus two. Now, when this guy multiplies by this X squared minus two quantity being squared, you can think about, let me wrap this and put this to the first power. This, one of these would cancel with this. Okay, so you'd be left with that. So let me erase this actually drag this down here. I'll just redo the whole thing. So what you'd have is the quantity AX plus B times you'd have this quantity X squared minus two. And I erased my CX. Let me put plus my CX plus D. Okay. So from here again, just some basic algebra can get a bit tedious, but let's just knock it out. So we have our negative six X squared plus 13 is equal to, I'm going to foil this out. This would be AX cubed. My outer would be minus 2ax, my inside would be plus bx squared, and my last would be minus 2b, okay? Then I have plus cx and then plus d. Now, the idea here is that we have inequality, okay? So the two sides are equal. Now, what you want to do is you want to match the left side to the right side. So what do I mean by that? Well, get all your terms with x cubed together, get all your terms with x squared together, get all your terms with x to the first power together, and get all your constants together, okay? So you'll see here you have ax cubed. So let me just write this over here. I'm just going to put my equality right there, and I'll say, okay, well, I have ax cubed. And then what do I have that's x squared? Well, just one, so plus bx squared. What do I have that's x to the first power? I have minus 2ax right here, and then I have plus cx right there, okay? So if I wanted to, I could factor out the x, and I could put plus x times the quantity. I'll go ahead and write this as c minus 2a like this, okay? So again, if I put those guys next to each other, I could factor out the x, and that's what I would have. So then I'm thinking about my constant terms, and I just have this negative 2b, and I have this plus d, okay? So I can put plus, you can go d minus 2b like this, okay? So I want to match this up with this side. Obviously, I don't have a term where I have x cubed, but I can always use zero, okay? So what I can do is I can put, and I don't think I can actually fit this on the screen, so let me slide this down a little bit. 
and I'll just put this up here. I'll put that I have zero x cubed, okay? And then I'll put that I have the minus six x squared. And then I don't have x to the first power, so again, I'm just gonna use zero, so plus zero x, and then plus 13. Okay, so this is equal to this. So what you wanna do now is say for this to be true, then a, which is the coefficient for x cubed, has to be equal to zero. Okay, so we already know a is zero. Let me write that down. A is equal to zero. Then also, we can say that negative 6 is equal to b, right? This is the coefficient for x squared. This is the coefficient for x squared. So I can say b is equal to negative 6. Then I can say that 0 is equal to, the coefficient for x is this c minus 2a, okay? So I can say that c minus 2a is equal to 0. And then lastly, I can say that d minus 2b, so d minus 2b, is equal to this 13 right here, okay? So all you have to do is just set this up to where the two sides match and then equate things. So the coefficient for x cubed here, coefficient for x cubed here, coefficient for x squared here, coefficient for x squared here, coefficient for x to the first power here, coefficient for x to the first power here, constant here, constant here, okay? That's all you're doing. So once you have this, you're going to basically cut it away and let's paste this in here and let's see what we can get for a solution. This one looks pretty easy. So I already know a is zero and b is negative six. So see here, if I plugged in, if I plugged in for a, I know this is zero. Let me change this color here. I know this is zero. I can say that c is basically equal to zero, right? Two times zero is zero and c would basically just be zero there, okay? So then let me just go ahead and erase this. We know what c is. Now we have d minus two b equals 13. Well, I know b is negative six, so let's plug that in. Let's plug that in, and let's bring this up here. So d, negative two times negative six is positive 12, so d plus 12 equals 13. Subtract 12 away from each side, and we're gonna get that d is equal to one. Okay, so d equals one. Okay, so now we have all the information we need to go back and solve our problem. So let's cut this away, and let me paste this in here, and I'm just gonna plug in. So a is zero, so zero times x, that's just gone. B is negative six, so let me put a negative six up here. My C is zero, so again, that's gone. And my D is one, so I'll just put that right there like that. And that's basically all you need to do. You can always check this by getting a common denominator and going in the reverse process of taking this guy, okay, and transforming it into this guy, and that's how you can check.